right, everyone. Hello, and welcome to our 30-minute webinar. Uh, my name is Jim Schultens, and I'm joined by Matt Sykes, a couple of system engineers over here at Verifarm. Uh, for today's webinar, we're going to talk about Cisco cause codes and how they can aid in determining call flows and termination rates. We're going to start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. We'll jump into a live demo where Matt will teach us all about Cisco cause codes and how to best use them for reporting or troubleshooting. We'll pause for some Q&A and get your questions answered. During the demo, if you do have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel in the bottom right screen. After Q&A, we will reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So make sure you stick around to see if you've won. All right, quick overview of Verify. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX contact center reporting and wallboarding, Ninja managed consulting services, our new Cisco Cube reporting, remote phone control, change management, and dial plan management. But today, like I said, we're going to focus on Cisco cause if you have any questions on any of our other features, we can certainly take them offline and get those answered. One more thing we, before we go, as I mentioned, Verify has a managed consulting service that is available to our customers. Verify's SE team will be engaged in a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SE to do the heavy lifting so you don't have to. For more information, please contact us and we'd be happy to speak with you more in depth about the service offering. All right, Matt, are you ready to go into the wild? Woo, I'm ready, let's I go. I figured you would be. Hold on <laughs> one second, stop sharing and give you the ball. Go share, share screen two, and here we go. You know, just drag this header out of the way. It's always in the way. All right, welcome everybody. Matt Sykes with Verify here. Okay, today in this weekly webinar, we're gonna talk about Cisco cause codes. But I think first, before we do that, we first have to understand what is physics, okay? Um, it was a warm summer night in ancient Greece, circa 600 BC. <laughs> I'm all teasing, I'm teasing. Okay, Cisco cause codes. What are Cisco cause codes? All right, Cisco cause codes are call termination codes. And we'll actually, I'll pull up the uh, Cisco documentation here on these codes specifically. And actually, I believe, Jim, if you would, Mike, could you uh, pass out that link on the chat to everyone so they can get a copy of this, uh, this page? What we're going to do is we're gonna comb through and look at these cause codes. So on this page here, I'll just kind of start with the Cisco, Cisco documentation passing the, uh, passing the codex. So the call termination codes, as Jim had mentioned, we're gonna to cover today. Okay, so there are a lot of cause codes that come in the CDR data from call manager. So there's always two sides to every call, I guess, or two codes to every call with regards to the cause codes. There's an originating and a terminating side. So we do need to be mindful of, I guess, the call direction um, of these codes and who it ties back to, and we'll go through all of that. So there's definitely uh, more common codes that you'll see in normal uh, call hopping and transferring and answering and handling in an environment. So within Verify, we give the, uh, the ability to go ahead and kind of group things together, showcase to you these cause codes with their, you know, their English translation, not just the code, so that you can kind of see, as Jim mentioned, you know, the call flow within the environment. If there are kind of some abnormalities that are happening, certainly we can see those, but also I know how the calls are being handled you know, through the environment. So if there are a lot of hops, we're certainly going to see some normal cause codes, which I'm going to kind of walk through right now. Now, call code zero, if you will, no error is one of the top three normal cause codes that we will see on normal traffic, as well as normal call clearing. And actually, we will be leaning on that quite heavily today. So that is one and two. The other one is a call split, and you're going to see plenty of that. Uh, where's it? It's this long one down here. Call split, this code applies to um, when a call terminates. For lack of a better term, it's when transfers are uh, being invoked, whether there's a call forward all, a manual uh, manual transfer or an auto redirect from the system, it's a very normal code that we will see, okay? But there are other codes that we see that are maybe potentially abnormal or even potentially malicious with uh, intrusion attempts, perhaps. 
So if I just scroll back up here, or even for dropped calls and stuff. So I mean, we can see no circuit channel unavailable, temporary failures, switching equipment congestion, as well as other failure, I guess, drop call reasons that can be certainly utilized from the Verify reporting solution to kind of showcase this for you, okay? So certainly feel free to go ahead and, and read through this list. I mean, definitely as I comb through, there are a lot of them that we actually can key off. We key off of all of them. You'll see them in our drop down pick list in a moment. But just kind of combing through them, I always normally say to people outside of some of the ones that were up above, but the SIP 400, 500, and 600 range definitely are not good. So let's just take a look at them real briefly. So like bad request, unauthorized, forbidden, scroll down to the 500 range, you know, internal server errors, service unavailable, bad gateways, uh, plenty of use cases on these. I've seen rogue write fax servers placing calls, degradating call quality in the environment where we build a quick little widget and able to identify um, that device based off of cause codes alone, okay? So we're gonna run through a bunch of that right now. So first things first, let's just start off with a, uh, an analytics history search here in one of my labs. So um, I'll just use maybe, uh, I don't know, this, this sample called party number filter field that's there for us. Change my conditional operator starts with so I can include everything one character or greater with that capital X wildcard. I'll maybe point back a few weeks just to grab a little bit of data. And in the history section here, if you have not widely used your history search before, I, I personally use it as a sandbox because I can build anything I need to in here as well as invoke the report me mechanisms to uh, export results with groupings and all charts and tables. But uh, if you uh, haven't really touched your history search section much, you probably only have about eight or so columns in here. Certainly feel free to add additionals in here. But for today's webinar, we're gonna focus on cause codes. Now, normally I have them in my listing, but for this demonstration, I pulled them out. You will find them in the signaling section here. Okay, so even if I take off that filter and slide down to the signaling section, we'll see the codes here with other codecs and other methods and other pieces as well for signaling. But we're just gonna go ahead and grab the originating and terminating. So we can add those in there. And then briefly to slide them up my laundry list here so that we can kind of read more intuitively left to right. Put it right next to scenario types to give me a little more of a, a better picture. All right, so for the plain Jane um, search that I ran here was for uh, you know, the previous two weeks, everything wide open in this lab. I've got you know, 10,000 calls to review. This is you know, inbound, outbound traffic, as well as internals. So obviously I can see outbound calls being made or originated off my SCP internal max here for this time of day, which is just after midnight or so. But if I slide over uh, in my detail section here, now I can see the cause codes now are going to illuminate for me because I've added those columns uh, per my designation. So as I just kind of mentioned in the Cisco doc sheet, normal codes you're gonna see are definitely normal call clearing, no error. And if I scroll down, we'll for sure see call split somewhere. We will, will we not? Here we go. Okay, so call splits. This tells me once again, that there is another call leg that is associated with this call record. So once again, this is a very normal kind of switching code that we're going to see. It will be replicated on both sides, originating and terminating, as you can see here. So if I were to run an export and turn on the cradle to grave reporting, look at these specific calls, guaranteed there are other calls that are associated and split. So we'll walk through those in a, in a moment as well. But now in my, in my lab here, I don't have a lot of, uh, I guess, the, out, the abnormal, I guess, cause code. So I don't feel like fishing through 10,000 records. So what we can do is we can use um, our widgets. We can use our reports to kind of filter and group that more easily at a higher summarized level for you. So let me just take your eyes over to one of my dashboards here. Uh, now, I'll, I always build out in, in any environment I go to kind of a, a cause code widget. And what I do with this, let me just pull this out. This is a grouping statistic style widget here. All right. What I do with this is I lean on those cause codes of the normal variety and I exclude them. So within this grouping statistic style widget here, okay, I'm grouping by our combination of originating or terminating cause codes. So either or either direction, I want to know about certain cause codes that I'm going to designate here in a moment or two in, this, in my search filters. I'm ranking this highest to lowest. By default, it will be name label, but I'm, I like a leaderboard myself, so I do a highest to lowest based off of count. I do up to top 50. I'm just doing top 10 here. Don't have that much data in this lab. But the search filter here, here's where the power comes from with this. So, we so from the, uh, the pick list that you'll see in a moment and all those codes that we saw off the Cisco documentation. So if I hit my drop down here and my, for my pick list, I've got all of those cause codes from that, that Cisco doc we were looking at earlier. Here are all the SIP 400, 500, and 600 that I kind of mentioned as well. But what you can see what's left behind here, I picked the top three normals. So the no error, the call split, and the normal call clearing. That I flip the Boolean on them just by simply clicking the is and turning it into an is not so that I can collect the other out non-normal cause codes based off of uh, frequency. And then I'm, I believe I'm keying off of a rolling 30, so previous 30 days, okay. 
So then what this gives out to me here in this lab here is to showing me you know, highest to lowest once again, unallocated unassigned numbers and 7,200 of those. Well, those may be of some consequence. Maybe we wanna look at those. However, I do have certain customers that actually kind of treat that one as the fourth normal one <clears throat> for exclusion. Um, because a lot of those are going to be kind of missed dials, fat finger dials, and we but we'll take a look at that in a moment. But definitely some of the other ones that could be there, the four, uh, four, five, and six hundred range ones could be in here. Um, temporary of failure is in here. That's definitely going to pair with you know drop codes or drop calls, excuse me. So I do believe uh, temporary failure, congestion, uh, congestion equipment, and destination out of order are a couple kind of go tos for recognizing drop calls, and that's exactly how I have this call statistic widget above here built. But if we just kind of built the leaderboard widget off of, you know, the abnormal or non-normal cause codes, maybe we want to reference these or search these real quickly and find out what these 7,225 7, are. Well, we can barely easily do so just with the ad hoc search here. So I'll just dive into uh, analytics and replicate that cause code search and look and look up those, uh, those 7,225, 7, excuse me. I was using the combination of a grouping, so I will use the same on my search. It was unallocated unassigned number, so I will specify that. I'm going to select the uh, the same time frame that my widget was using, which was the previous rolling 30 days. And this these results should bear the 7225. Okay, here we are, let me zoom in for your eyes just a tad. All right, so it looks like a, a lot of these seem to be zero duration calls. They are inbound and outbound of variety, but if I could slide over and look at the cause codes or some of the, you know, the data digits dialed, and I can see some kind of abbreviated digits dialed here. Maybe there's something that's not matching, um, maybe the, the dial peer or allowing it out, but certainly the cause codes, where are they? Where did I miss them? Oh, here they are. Oh, no, here we go. Originating or terminating cause codes. So here they are. So we have the unallocated on the originating side. That tells us that, if we slide back to the left, the originating device was the unallocated number. So this is spoof late, uh, lab data, but that, this would tell us that this calling number over this uh, device, obviously this is an inbound call, but, and this would be an outbound call. But these are the, the sides of the call that are actually having the issues with the, uh, the un, I guess the unallocated unassigned number, okay? So with that, we can also kind of search other examples as well. I think I have another one in this lab as well. Let me just segue to this dashboard briefly. But the I always build the uh, this top cost code because there's, it's, there's a lot of information that could be unknown to the UC admin groups that could be happening in the environment. So let me just take a look at this one. I think I have a couple SIP ones in here. This will load timely for me. But there's a lot of other things that we can garner from the cause codes that we're gonna uh, learn here in the reports in a moment as well. Definitely there comes use cases for, you know, managers or supervisors of, you know, call groups that wanna make sure that their users are allowing, you know, the external, you know, call inbound callers to hang up the phone first. So we can view the data even based off of these codes and identify which party's hanging up the phone first. All right, in this lab, yeah, okay. So in this lab, I have a few more options here to play with. So unallocated on a sign, once again, is the top of the leaderboard. There is no average call duration on this. So these are pretty much all zero duration calls. But if some of the others are of consequence, maybe this con these conference uh, drop any party. So we've got 31 calls that have been dropped after an average of 1736. So maybe we wanna take a look at that, uh, those for a search lookup and see if, if there's a certain conference bridge phone that's having a uh, you know, malfunctions that we may need to look at or any of the other codes, we can certainly do that as well. All right, so let's take a look at then um, some of the reportable options that we can provide. So let's take a look at um, actually a live report. So let's look at this inbound report that I have here. So this is on a uh, an inbound hunt group that's not large enough or is it? That should be good. Okay, so for an inbound hunt group here, very high level summarized, um, how many calls came in over the time frame? who's handled those calls. If we wanna look at the data elements, we certainly can. I have them baked in here. Let's look at bills. I have all these extra detail columns turned on with the cause codes right here, smack dab in the middle turned on. So we can certainly see as calls are flowing through the environment, the call split, the normal call clearing. Now we also will see no, no answer from user, user alerted, okay? So let's take a look at those. But I do have the cradle to grave turned on, so I wanna get a little bit deeper here. So I'm going to click on the link here for related calls shoot me down the report so I can kind of read the sequences. So each one of these sequences is an inbound call to this hunt group in some capacity, all right? So call manager has given us three legs for this call, but we can read it top down and see how the call traverse and thus the kind of how the cause codes are responding for the, I guess, the switching, if you will, to kind of see how the call flow is being manipulated. So once again, call split, very normal. There is a redirect, there's a call forward all on this. That is very, very common. Uh, we see the call gets forwarded over to the hunt group here. 
But unfortunately, we see another code here on the termination side. So once again, that no answer from user, user alerted. So Bill Grace wasn't available or was busy. So then the call took us another step and actually rang over to Unity. And then we can see the normal call clearing, as I had mentioned, this is code 16 if we re-reference the document. Um, but this is always going to illuminate uh, the party of the call that terminated or hung up the phone first. So in certain environments, uh, let's maybe find a connected call here. That's Unity, Unity, okay, right here. Perfect example. Uh, a call came into uh, my 7080, went over to my Unity handler. It was forwarded over to the Hunt group, spoke with uh, someone on extension uh, 1548 for a minute and 10 seconds, but we can see which party hung up the phone first. So originating terminating, you see the call split, that's normal because it came from the, uh, the first leg, but we see who has the normal call clearing. This denotes which party hung up the phone call. So it's on the terminating side. So the terminating device is the one that hung up the call first. Okay, now maybe the supervisors or managers actually want their people to allow the inbound clients or customers to actually hang up the phone first and not seem like they were rushed off the phone. So in that case, we would actually expect to see the normal call clearing on the originating side or the external entity that inbound dialed. Let's see, there's one actually pair true, like this one. Okay, so whereas we see the normal call clearing on the originating side, per originating cause code, lets us know, or the manager slash supervisor know that the agent that handled this call for 54 seconds allowed the uh, in, the inbound number two hang up first or to terminate, okay? So there's a lot of different things we can see in here. Um, even from cradle to grave, we can certainly summarize on um, you know, the top kind of abnormal styles of cause codes. I mean, there's definitely um, call scenarios where I've uh, definitely utilized uh, with call park, let's say. So if I was kind of, let's go take a look at some other reports. So some call park stuff or calls that are terminating in an IVR, for instance, I think is a good example I have. Let's see here. So we can also use and pair these cause codes also with search sets that use our search filters. So in this uh, sample template here, I'm looking for calls that are terminating within an IVR. I think I have two search sets built here. Yeah, one call is presented to an IVR. Um, I have the luxury of uh, Internal DNs being you know, four digit or five digit variety, so I can get away with the originating calling party number starting with greater than those internal DN digit lengths to signify inbound dials. This would be my, uh, my IVR CTI. And then I'm also pairing with this, you know, the, the, uh, a normal call clearing cause code being with the flip Boolean of is not, because the IVR connection should be the first step of the call before it passes it off to an agent or is serviced by an agent. But secondarily, I've also built in here where I want to identify calls that are terminating. So once again, leaning on the originating cause code being normal call clearing is normal call clearing, denoting that party was the one that hung up first, but also tying it to my IVR DN is, and ending it here with the match all criteria is signifying that this call terminated in my IVR. It didn't, it wasn't, there is no next step. There is no cradle to grave call leg to look at the next sequence piece or the next uh, leg hop for that. It is just terminated. So definitely a quick report that could be built and utilized. And I think I've got a little bit of data from January. Let's go give this a quick run. I'll run an HTML. Um, let's go to the top and specify specific. Let's go back to January. I'll go January 19 to 27, let's say. And we'll run that real briefly. And this is a very high level summarized report. Maybe if you want to know calls that are you know, abandoning in your IVR versus you know, what's presented, this is a quick little report to build, to get, build together, even with the ease of cause codes. And there's more to show you as well. So, bear, so stay tuned. Just waiting on this report. But while I'm waiting on that report, we can jump back to one of my other boards. And I've got too many widgets on this board. It may take a second or two to load, but we'll get there in a moment. That guy's still running, too much data. So the drop here, of course, there's a report right when I'm ready to move on. Okay, let me zoom in on this HTML. So calls terminated my IVR, as we were just mentioning. So I built that initial search set just to recognize at least calls that were presented to the IVR over said time frame. But then also using that originating cause code on the of normal call clearing to denote these calls actually died at the IVR or abandoned. So we have a 183 versus you know, the 668 that was presented. I certainly see if we needed to, I could remove one search set versus the other and actually see you know, what the high peak of time um, of abandonment, if you will, at the IVR is with our uh, period over period, whether it's in tables or charts as well. Um, have another example in that lab as well. Maybe we're using directed call park. Here's another situation I used uh, with a, a client not too long ago, where they're using a lot of uh, you know, part with a lot of directed call park in their environments. So we want, once again want to find out the abandonment in you know in the call parks. So once again, leaning on that normal call clearing cause code on the originating side, uh, and also and pairing it with a, a usage type as well of the, the directed call park and 
also marrying it with a final call party number for those directed call park ports. So identifying the port number, a normal call clearing, and this usage type is going to denote that this call actually hung up because if it did not and it was handled or serviced or picked off of, off of call park, there, there would be no normal call clearing cause code like on this originating code because it would, had, would have had a call split because it would have been handled by somebody in an additional call sequence. Okay. Not going to run that. Um, okay, so there are a lot of other things that we can also do with the codes that uh, is, is is very identifiable as well. So even kind of uh, reporting off of cradle to the grave or some of these kind of report kind of uh, mechanisms that I walk through to identify, you know, kind of some of the round robin stuff that's maybe happening within a, within a hunt group. Is there too much? No, di Ooh, of course, this is going to resize on me. Is there too much hopping that's happening within the environment on some of my calls? So let me find another quick example. If this report hasn't locked up, but it has. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a good one. So in this sequence, this is one inbound call that came into the environment. One inbound call, but I've got what five five call legs that call manager generated for us. So what bolded in orange is my hunt group pr presentation, let's say. Well, we can see the cause codes here in the middle, the originating and the terminating. So as it's getting bounced around and transferred, it's always going to be call split, call split, call split on both sides until it actually gets to an entity of some capacity. So it gets parked over here. We see this call get parked. We can actually see the no error, no error. But at the very bottom, we do see the last leg, we do see a termination code of normal call clearing on the originating side. So the amount caller, after being serviced for two minutes and five seconds by Bill Grace, hung up the call first. So <clears throat> probably that, that's the, the manner of operations that they, the supervisor want to see that. But also, are there, maybe, maybe we see calls that are bouncing in a contact center. Well, maybe we don't want those two. So maybe the routing setup for maybe this hunt group needs to be reevaluated perhaps because maybe it's taking up uh, inbound callers or customers clientele too long to actually get to where they need to be uh, presented to. All right, so other things we can look at with regards to codes. Now I'm gonna go dashboard heavy on everyone. I have a um, sample board here. We already, we already took a peek at those, excuse me. It's this one over here. Yes, my UC admin board. So on this, okay, my sizing is out of, whack right now. But system-wide abandonment is always one thing I like to key off of as well. Now, using cause codes, we can find you know abandonment pretty quickly as well. So once again, leaning on a lot of that normal call clearing stuff, uh, we can kind of identify abandonment very easily. So I'm utilizing system-wide abandonment. So I'm calling this widget here. I'm doing it on a couple other widgets below, which we're going to get to in a moment. And we'll actually be able to validate the abandonment stats that are actually being placed in these in these widgets here. But my search filters here, what am I using? Okay, so I'm using originating cause code, once again, leaning heavily on normal call clearing on the inbound originating side and matching that with, you know, a greater than probably eight or nine characters to signify an inbound dial from the outside as well. And I could do one of two things. I could actually put a call duration of zero on here, or I could specify in the, my uh, duration filter status here to only include zero duration calls or only include not connected calls zero duration calls and abandoned calls are already part of not connected calls. So you certainly have some options there. So that's that paired uh, together with the normal clearing uh, and the zero duration variety over a time frame will definitely bear the fruit of my system wide abandonment. So I have replicated that on a few widgets down here. Let me resize a few so this looks a little better on the eyes. There's all my dormancy stuff. All right, here's the uh, abandonment. This looks, this look good. Okay, so we can see here, how often it is happening. So it's pretty much 73, 73, 73. I have sprinkled around. Let's pop this up just a smidge. Move the side, share the room. Here we are. Come on, here we are. Okay, so for the same 73 system wide, I've, I've replicated this widget and copied it down on subsequent widgets down here. I've turned it into a grouping statistic widget and then also then filtered by the terminating end user ID that unfortunately call manager is somewhat kind of blaming for the call. I'll specify that in a second, but certainly also replicating the time frames that's happening. Now I'm, I'm doing this system wide. Now certainly we can do this, uh, you know, you know, whether department based or you know, organization, um, excuse me, uh, device pool based or location based, definitely a lot of uh, filterable options there for us. We can break it down you know, by quarter hour of the day cumulatively in our volume charts if we need to, or by date by day over day. Also, we can even lay, list out the uh, the granular level of this data in a, a call history's detail widget. Now there is a cap of a top 50 calls in here, but certainly we can see on the scenario types, they are all abandoned. So we do recognize them as abandoned and we need to look at them, you know, maybe very high level or even granular level like this, you know, this detail here and see which numbers calling in frequently, where are they try, where are they attempting to that are failing and being abandoned. Maybe this is you know, 
since a staffing issue. Maybe this is one or two people that need to be spoken to. Um, but I do want to make a case point for uh, broadcast hunt groups, though. So in this capacity, on uh, broadcast hunt groups, um, abandoned calls where the inbound caller does not want to wait around, they hang up on the phone first um, before the be being service. Call manager will stamp the, the call record with a, a device name or if a phone MAC address that unfortunately is going to subsequently get blamed for, I guess, the abandonment. So normally we see that as like the first or the last position in the hunt list as far as what user gets blamed or what MAC does. So definitely we would probably want to take a secondary look at this before, you know, writing somebody up or, you know, judging a staff member for uh, their inefficiencies. Because there's normally, I think, in the, in the broadcast hunt group variety, there's always going to be one person that's kind of running away with the abandoned count. Just to kind of be, be mindful of that. All right, what else do I have here? Well, I think I'm a little light on content now. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done with the cause codes, but definitely first things first, I would say is definitely build yourself a top cause code widget with our grouping statistics, just as, and, then, and then filter out the normal ones, just so you can see, just to be aware, even for a test, just to see what's, what's, run, what's running at the top of the leaderboard with regards to the, uh, the abnormal or potentially malicious cause codes in your environment that you're unaware of. I would definitely do that. We should have, um, well, we will have this webinar our post, but we have knowledge base articles on this as well. But as always, you know, Verify Support is always willing to uh, lend a hand. Jim, uh, a little light on content, my friend. You got any uh, Q&A or any questions for me that oh, you, down the pipeline? You are fine. Don't worry about it, Matt. Uh, <laughs> a lot of good content there. Okay. Uh, we do have a couple questions. Also, had a couple comments about that link that we shared. It wasn't accessible. We'll really? have to look into that. Oh, okay. We may be able to post that on Planet if we can. Yeah, we'll go ahead and post some. We'll post some Planet afterwards. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, one question from Tony: uh, Can we get alerts on the bad cause codes when they appear? You know, I'm, that was a that's a great question. But first, we have to understand what is physics. It was a long. <laughs> whoa, 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 man! Don't go off on that. <laughs> teasing, teasing. Alerts, great question, Jim. And actually, we do. So, in the UCM alerts, if we go into analytics and go underneath the configure section, we do have alerts. And actually, cause codes are part of the alerts. Now, in this lab, I don't have any set up, but normally you'd have 911 toll fraud alerts. But in the search that filters underneath the alerts, cause code is one of the options. So in the dynamic search, I type cause, I've got the combo. You can certainly go single direction if you like. Me, I'm a kind of a combo person. So I can certainly specify on the combo and then get my pick list. But now I do want to preface and be mindful to everyone on the call. Now, if we build an alert like this, unfortunately, I don't have a threshold just yet. So every time one of these, if we were to filter out the normal ones, every time one of those codes that's not of the normal three or four, it would trigger an email alert. Now we will have thresholding for this coming down the pipeline uh, in, in a, in the near future, we're doing the uh, the contact center uh, express uh, thresholding first, but call manager is certainly going to be roped into this as well as these cost codes for threshold alerting. Great question, Tony. Yep. All right. Greg asks, and I'm not sure if this is cause code related, but we can throw it out there and I'll sure. take it offline if we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, could you show me how to do a report that filters out calls that go through the JTAPI numbers that UCFX uses so I can find out who isn't calling our call center and calling agents directly. Ah. That seems like more of a UCCX. It, it is, but what I would probably do, and I can't, I can't dem demonstrate it right now, um, but what I would recommend would be hopping into the analytics section of, a call, of the CUCM piece and utilizing the history search to kind of maybe key off of some of the CCX triggers. So your default field is always gonna be uh, original call party number when you're presented in the history section. I would use this default field here, put in your, um, your CCX trigger and then view the data for you know, whatever your time frame is. But then once you do, here, I'll pick on a hunt group. Uh, export the results with Cradle to Grave turned on. So from here, you can turn on the export and slide over to Cradle to Grave. And turning on this toggle will give us all those sequences like we were seeing in my hunt group report here. So you can kind of read it all the way down. So you should be able to kind of see that that trigger kind of going into contact center. Now, obviously, the call manager data is only going to have not, not going to have the inner workings and hoppings and CCX. But I think we will have the you know the pre and post CCX uh, ho I guess hoppings of that call that uh, the traverse. So. <clears throat> You could be able to read those codes from within there. So I would, I'd lean on the history with the uh, the cradle to grave search. All right. Awesome. Or, or if that was too ambiguous, my explanation there, feel free to <laughs> feel free to uh, reach out to, to the support department. We can dig into this much thoroughly for you. Yep, for sure. Uh, Richard asked uh, again. This doesn't seem like it, but it's a, I think it's a quick answer. Uh, can we do a report of calls being sent to voicemail, but there oh. is no voicemail in in the inbox? 
So we can do it going to voicemail. We don't get an indication whether a voicemail was left or not. Um, Correct. Sometimes we can go on duration. If it's a short duration, you can assume that you know they hung up while the message was playing, but that we don't get an actual indication that a voicemail. Exactly. It looks like my lab's missing a few at the moment, but normally you would see, um, yeah, for instance, yeah, this hunt group call wasn't answered. Well, this one was answered, but uh, assume that this was like a DN 1000 or 8000, something like that. And the terminating device name was Cisco UM, denoting it was a voicemail port. Now we can tell you that the call you know, was sent to voicemail or sent over to Unity, but as Jim just after mentioned, you no, know, we can't justify whether or not a voice message was left in the box. But good question. But well, we can certainly yeah, we kind of we can we can gauge we can gauge you know its its pre presentation into Unity, but not if anything was uh, left. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch of questions flowing in here. Uh, Far away. Take up too much time, but uh, <laughs> Stephanie asks, can you take some extra time to talk about not connected calls? I was advised that these can be call legs that were transferred. Is there any other oh. way to blend the legs so we don't see these as not connected? Cool. Yes, um, and then that's a great question, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, um, maybe my data doesn't support it now, but in certain environments, I, yeah, I might have the data reports now, but in like C2G sequences, we'll pick on that one long one. If there's some like round robin kind of going on where a call's presented to one, you know, a, a queue or to a shared line group and we get a no answer from user, user busy kind of deals and it gets routed elsewhere or to a backup rollover hunt group and stuff like that, definitely you will see not connected calls in these sequences. We can certainly filter them out out so that we're not duplicate duplicating the calls you know I guess the inbound presented calls so definitely yes uh, to, to answer that yes we can but uh, I think I'm a little light on time to showcase that but mm -hmm. definitely from the filter status we can't oops, excuse me we can uh, where are they only include we can exclude well not connected calls are always going to be zero duration calls so if I exclude zero duration calls thusly I'm excluding the not connected calls but if we need to look more intently on on the not connected calls and why they're why they're so apparent, we can focus on them specifically and include them and cuddle down to them. But once again, that sounds like a, a quick uh, maybe twenty minute support call. Yep. Yep. But, good, but great All question. Right. Yep. Uh, one last question looks like from Simi. Uh, mm -hmm. Normal call clearing can be used to show which party ended the call. As you mentioned. Correct. Mm -hmm. What other cause codes can indicate user behavior? Can indicate user behavior. Behavior, yeah, like uh, user, you know, an agent hanging up before they should, or you know, they want the caller to hang up. Is there any other cause codes that could do that, or bad behavior? I guess. I mean, bad behavior. Sure. That, that's a great question, Simi. Actually, yeah. um, I mean, because bad behavior. I mean, even if it's abandoned, we're going to see the normal call clearing on the at the originating side, but the but the back end, the terminating is, is always probably going to be like no error or user answer busy or user busy no answers alerted something like that. Um, I would still lean on kind of the cause code kind of uh, grouping widget to kind of identify that stuff. Um, but there, don't get me wrong, there are calls that drop, and you, there is no normal call clearing because there's kind of a a, a terminating code that is you know, no call congestion, you're not going to get a normal call clearing. So I would say start with the kind of the leaderboard widgets. Do I have um, with the leaderboard widgets for a grouping <clears throat> section, filtering out the normal ones so, so you can identify the potentially abnormal ones because those are the ones you're certainly going to want to look at. Where there's calls being dropped, there's congestion failures. So even on my, do I have one here? Drop calls, I do. Even on this drop calls, call statistic widget, I think I'm keying off of three cause code types. And these would be three of the other ones. That would, sub, so, that would be, I would solidify bad behavior, switching equipment, congestion, temporary failure, network out of order. But once again, there's still a lot of other codes that can, that uh, are out there that are non-normal that potentially, yeah, well, that one that we saw in, on my lab earlier, conference drop, uh, any party conference drop, last party. So there's definitely device flaws. So these can be de device flaws as well. So there's definitely a lot to utilize. So that's why I think the grouping mechanism, where'd it go? My grouping mechanism here with the, uh, with the grouping stats, which it here kind of filtering out the normal ones definitely illuminates maybe where some problems may lie. And then you can kind of chase these down with the history search section here to find out these. All you have to do is just match the code with the time frame, and you'll be able to find out what these eight calls that were destination of out of order. But great questions to me. All right. All right. Yeah, we did have a couple of follow up things, but uh, we're running we'll, short we're, on time. So, yep, yeah. yep. We'll, we'll follow up or feel free to uh, run up a support ticket with us. Yeah, you could drop them to support at verify.com yep. and we can get those questions answered immediately. Yep. And I will steal the ball back from you, Matt. Thank you. Great presentation as always. No more about no more learning about Greece.
<laughs> no, I think we're done with that. We'll have a okay. special uh, webinar on that. Very well, thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, Q&A is done, and we want to mention, uh, before I get to the winner, uh, thanks for all hanging out here. I want to remind you to join uh, our new community, uh, Planet Verify. It's a great place to connect with your peers, expand and share your knowledge, and best of all, earn points towards rewards. Uh, you can also ask, ask questions like you have been on the uh, on the chat here. So um, you can use your verify.com login credentials to gain access. Uh, we do currently have a show us your dashboard contest where you could win up to $500 by sharing uh, your cool dashboards that you use every day. Uh, feel free to reach out to your account manager or one of us SEs if you need assistance. All right, the moment we have all been waiting for Drum the roll. winner of this week's gift card is Dave Schmeling. Congratulations, Ooh. Dave. Uh, we'll have your account manager reach out to you shortly and uh, coordinate that gift card. And um, Last thing before we go, I want to thank you all for attending. Uh, don't forget to join us next week as Matt and Vic will be showing off our new report templates for not only CUCM and UCCX, but new CUBE reporting. Don't want to miss it. Yeah. Nope. All right. Stay, stay thank tuned. you all and have a great day. Thank you all. Take care. Thanks, Matt.